Are you considering purchasing an older Philadelphia home versus new construction? Stay tuned for some tips to uncover hidden issues up front with less surprises later. Hi, I'm Veronica Woods from Daniel Woods Real Estate Company, where we help our clients avoid making five and six figure mistakes when it comes to buying and selling real estate in the Philadelphia area. If you're new to watching my real estate wisdom blog, I post a new video roughly every week. It's always on a topic related to real estate investing or general home ownership. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. That way you will be the first to know when the next video is published. Or you can sign up for my email list and there's a link for that in the description below the video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about buying an older home. Now, if you want to buy a home in the Philadelphia area, chances are it will be an older one. First, the inventory of homes available. Roughly a third of the homes in this area were built before 1950. Also, if you want to save some money, buying an older home may make financial sense. Trulia did a study looking at the homes in the Philadelphia area and it showed that when someone bought a newer home or a new construction, they paid 188% more than if they were to buy an older one. Now before I jump into my five questions you should ask when you're buying an older home, it's important to know that oftentimes, or most of the time, you're going to need a professional to help you fully answer these questions. Now I'm a realtor, I'm not a licensed contractor, and when I have a client looking at an older home, I always ask them to bring in an expert sooner rather than later, especially if it's a larger repair that is going to have impact to the value of the home. That could be a home inspector or it could be a licensed contractor in the area um, related to the problem in the house. Okay, with that disclaimer, we're ready to jump into the five questions you should ask when buying an older home. Question number one is, are there any foundation issues? Now, when I'm walking into an older home, I'm immediately looking for signs of foundation issues that a novice could detect. Maybe sloping floors in some of the rooms, large cracks on the wall. Small cracks are okay, but things that are greater than a quarter inch, that could be signs of a problem. Now, if the owner knows that they've had foundation issues in the past, they're going to be expected to disclose that in the seller's disclosure document. Now, if they have done work to treat it, they may have work that's still under warranty. I would ask for it. If you don't have any documentation related to a foundation issue and you notice any of those issues that I mentioned earlier, I would definitely bring in an expert in at that time to assess, is this really a problem? Question number two is, are there signs of roof damage? Now, you're probably not likely to be scaling a ladder and walking across the roof when you're first touring a house or maybe even your second or third trip to the house if you're not a contractor. But there are things that you can look for on the inside to give you some good information. The first thing you wanna do is when you're looking on the second floor, look for signs of water damage in the ceilings. There are water marks, brown stains, those are all signs that there was some roof damage in the past. Now you may, what's most important is to figure out is that leak active. Um, so if you're coming in after a rain, it will be very apparent from a dripping water from the ceiling or water on the floor. Now there may be the case where the, the leak is not active and the homeowners repaired it years ago but just didn't get around to repairing the ceiling. That's also will be a signal to you that there may be other deferred maintenance sort of repairs in the home. Question number three is what is the condition of the HVAC? Now, if you're looking for a home during the winter time, you have the benefit of fully testing out the system during the harshest time of the, the year here in Philadelphia. If you're looking in the spring and summer, however, you don't have that option. 
So if you have an older home and you see it's an older boiler, you'll want to go ahead and budget that you may have to replace the entire system in the next two to three years. Maybe a seller may give you a home warranty for another year, but it's still best to budget to replace it sooner rather than later. Question four, is the electrical system up to date? Now as a lay person, I'm not an electrician, but there are a few things I can take note of. One, the presence of three-prong versus two-prong ungrounded outlets throughout the house. Then when I tour the basement, do I see a tangled mess of wires that show signs of amateur work in the past? Now I ask my electrician or inspector to look at the panel box to make sure there's nothing's overloaded and everything is going to be able to fit my appliances that I'm going to be running in the house. The real boogeyman in this area is something called knob and tube wiring. This is an electrical system that was prevalent in the 40s. Now it causes some aggravation with insurance companies. But even with the presence of knob and tube wiring, there are ways to remediate and keep the deal alive if there's nothing else wrong with the house. But it's important to know that and to take action accordingly. Question number five, and the last one with this video, is how is the plumbing? Now, since most of the plumbing system is hidden behind the walls, if you have an older house, you're much more likely to run into problems in this area. So you wanna ask a lot of questions. When was the last time the current owners updated the plumbing? What kind of materials did they use? If you don't observe any signs of issues up front, like with the water pressure, for instance, you may be able to get away with kind of strategically replacing the plumbing as you're updating the kitchen and bathroom. In summary, you will want to take extra care and due diligence if you're thinking about purchasing an older home because you will be much more likely to run into a major repair even within the first few years of home ownership. So a few things you can do to safeguard it that I mentioned on this video. One, make sure you have the proper professional put eyes on anything questionable across the property. Second, you'll want to budget extra reserves up front because when that eventuality happens, when you have to replace the heater or so forth, you'll want to be prepared. Lastly, you want to have a realtor that's going to help you navigate how to negotiate getting those repairs done and how to make better offers that reflect those repairs. Thanks again for watching another Real Estate Wisdom blog. I'm Veronica Woods from Daniel Woods Real Estate Company. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. I'm putting out new videos each week. Love to hear your comments wherever you're watching it, on Facebook, YouTube, wherever. Looking for suggestions of other helpful topics. And as always, I'm going to strive to create more content to help you keep more money in your pocket when you're buying and selling real estate.